1979, Myasaura was named in a publication by Jack Horner and Bob Makala. And they found a bunch of little dinosaurs all together in what looked like a nest-shaped depression. And nearby they also found a larger dinosaur skull. And by comparing the shape or morphology of the baby skulls to the adults, they concluded that these were probably from the same species. And what was really interesting is that the little babies weren't small enough to have just hatched out of an egg. So the idea is that they stayed together in this nest-shaped depression and grew older there, and so they were cared for by the adults. And because this was, this was an, an incredibly important find, it was the first time that evidence of parental care in dinosaurs had ever really been um, put forward and hypothesized. And because of this, Horner and Makala named Myasaura because it means good mother lizard. So this is a tibia from a Myasaura individual. So this is the shin bone or lower leg bone, um, same as in us, only this is much bigger. And what I do is I study the bone fossil or fossil bone microstructure of um, long bones such as this tibia. And what I do is examine what's inside the bone. Um, so taking a look at this, this fossil bone, um, we can see the shape of it, we can, we can measure it, we can do um, estimates on size of the animal from this bone, but what I'm more interested in is what's inside the bone because by looking at the bone on the microstructural level or the microscopic level, we can actually determine things like how fast the animal grew, how old it was when it died, was it skeletally mature? Had it stopped growing when it died? Or was it still growing? Was it a, a juvenile? Um, and we do this in large part by looking at the bone tissue organization as well as the growth rings. Um, every animal alive today, if it takes more than a year to grow up, has growth rings, just like tree rings. So you can count those to figure out how old the animal was when it died. And in order to access this information, I take a bone like this tibia, and I make a, a small section. I take a chunk out of the bone shaft. And when I do that, I eventually uh, polish it down so thin that light can pass through. And you end up with what we call a thin section slide. And so what you're seeing here, all the brown is bone. And the middle, this white spot, this would be where the marrow cavity was. And when I look at this through a microscope, I can see all the tiny bone microstructures that were there in real life, they've been fossilized as well. So by looking at those and interpreting them using modern bones for comparison, I can then make inferences on how this dinosaur lived and died. And by doing this, and by doing this for multiple myosaur individuals, so I started with a sample size of 50, um, I've been able to figure out how fast myosaur grew um, at the maximum amount it, it took, um, Myasaur was growing up to 80 micrometers a year as far as the bone actually widening out. So um, by doing this, I was able to figure out that Myasaur took about eight years on average to go from being about a half meter on hatching out to full grown at seven meters in length. And that's just an amazing growth rate. Um, and the cool thing about the Myasaura, as I said before, is the sample size is so amazing. We normally just have handfuls of fossil material to look at, but because we have so many Myasaura, um, a sample size of 50 might not sound like much, but for dinosaur paleontology, it's incredible, and actually gives us statistical strength to make these inferences about uh, survivorship, about growth, and about in inferring life history traits of these animals. And also, like I said before, we get to access or understand the variability within the species a lot better because we get to see how multiple individuals are growing. Not all animals grow at the same rate, even within the same species. So we're getting a better handle on how an entire species is actually growing.